When I was a kid, any time I'd hear one of these stories about someone who had fought off a shark by like poking him in the eyes, or fought off a, and killed a bear with like a tent pole, the only feeling that went through my bones was jealousy. I fantasized probably a little too often about having my own hardcore wilderness showdown experience. Four years ago, Mother Nature decided she was long overdue to call my bluff. <laughs> I've done a fair bit of backpacking, and in 2012, I went on a five-day solo camping trip, and uh, right from the first day, it was a pretty remote area, and right on that first day, I got attacked by a dog, like a big... <laughs> And it, it, was a, it was a big dog, it was like a, it was not like a sucker, it was, like it was Snoopy, it was like a big Caucasian shepherd who leapt up at me and I was only able to get him off my leg by hitting him in the head with a big rock. It was a man eater. Uh, the second day, I barely escaped up a tree after being chased uh, vengefully off across a field by a cow, <laughs> which is emasculating. Uh, but finally, the third day, things calmed down a bit, and I had a beautiful hike. I came over this 11,000-foot pass, and I put up my tent next to a little stream, and there's a glacier off behind me and a tumbling valley in front of me, and I fell asleep in tranquil bliss until 1 o'clock in the morning when I awoke to the distinct sound of something sniffing at the back of my head. My tent doesn't have any windows, but there was a full moon, so I could see the crisp silhouette of anything that was within about a foot or two. And so lying there, wrapped securely in my sleeping bag like some kind of alpine burrito, <laughs> I turned my head back and I stared at the unmistakable head, no more than a foot away, of a wolf. And I, I pulled some kind of like weird yoga inchworm move backwards that I, I, I got back and I reached into my tent pocket and I got out my knife. Unfortunately, this isn't like some Rambo 14 inch blade with a blood gutter down the side. It's a, it's a three inch fold out knife that I think can most menacingly be described as pointy. The wolf didn't take much notice. He was nonplussed. Uh, he sniffed around and then he left. But I was convinced he could come back at any minute and attack, so I started digging through my backpack quickly. Uh, and I, I push aside my sleeping pills, which I think I might use as some kind of roofie for the wolf. Um, I push aside uh, the 10-inch pot lid that might serve as a tiny shield to go with my tiny spear. And I go straight for my bug spray. <laughs> which I realize doesn't sound that threatening, but it's, it was 75% deep. And my theory is that that would be like like mace in, in a wolf's eyes. So, so the plan becomes, if he, if he comes back and tries any rough stuff, um, I, will just, I will empty that bottle in his face, just, you know, like... Um, you know, like there's just pump action hell. And then uh, just start driving my knife into his chest until one of us is dead. About 10 minutes later, my heart sinks when I hear footsteps crossing the stream. And then my heart sinks exponentially lower because I'm pretty damn sure I can hear a lot more than just one animal's footsteps coming across, which just seems unsporting. <laughs> but for a good 15 minutes, I don't see anything. I just hear all this scuffling about. And then I see a shadow getting darker as it approaches the tent. And it's a, it's a low tent, but there's a wolf that is the height of my tent. And he starts pacing around. I can see the muscles in his shoulders move. I can see his head bobbing as he sniffs the circumference of the tent. And then on one of his laps, he turns his whole body and he stares exactly where I'm sitting. With my knife and my bug spray. <laughs> My spine just melts, and I start shaking, and the silence is only broken by the sound of claws on nylon as he begins pawing at the tent, and the whole thing shakes like a tiny sailboat in a storm. And then he lowers his head, his ears go back, and he lets out a barely audible but terrifying and lingering growl. 
there's a chance that I'm gonna die tonight. <laughs> Horribly. And no one will hear me screaming, and no one will know what happened. And in that moment, a tiny voice in my head asks a really peculiar question, which is, do you want the wolf to attack? Because then you've got an opportunity for that hardcore wilderness showdown and you want it so fucking bad as a kid. <laughs> And immediately, I have three realizations in very quick succession. Number one is that for every, you know, badass man versus nature story that someone's relaying to Matt Lauer, there's gotta be at least 20 people sitting around the bar telling about the time they found a dismembered body in the woods. <laughs> and number two is that I have never in my life actually fantasized about fighting off a wild animal. I fantasized about telling people the story about how I killed, fought off a wild animal. That's a very different thing. And number three, torn apart by wolves would be an amazing epitaph. And I'm imagining my gravestone and thinking that would be pretty badass actually. And then I actually imagine what that means. And I imagine how is this really likely to go down? And I imagine the wolf's gonna attack, come through the nylon, I'll spray or stab, but he's gonna go right past that. And I imagine what it's gonna feel like when those jaws lock on my throat and I feel and I hear my spine crunch and my throat is punctured and as I try to get in any oxygen or grab at his head, all I can taste and inhale is blood as a pack of wolves then tear me apart. I was waiting for you to laugh. <laughs> Um, but as that's going through my head, I, I then think, you know, no, I don't want the wolf to attack. Um, and I'm trying to send the wolf now telepathic vibes saying that, like, man, hey, I respect you. I, I donate to the Sierra Club. You know, I... <laughs> and the wolf lets out a little grunt as if, uh, as if he's listening to my internal dialogue and thinking, you are such a pussy. <laughs> but whatever he's thinking, uh, he stands down. He walks around the tent a couple times. He lies down against the front of it. And he goes to fucking sleep. <laughs> Which isn't a whole lot better. Um, so I'm, I'm staring at him, waiting for him to make his move or waiting for his, you know, his pack to come at me like velociraptors from the side. And I stare at him, shaking, and my hands are sweating, and I can't hold the knife or the bug spray for an hour until the moon goes down, and there's nothing but total blackness. And the only things I can see are whatever I can imagine. And what I'm imagining is that any moment, there's gonna be razor-sharp teeth and claws coming out of nowhere. And every moment, that's what I'm imagining happening for three hours, until my adrenaline burns up and I just pass out. And when I wake up a couple hours later, I'm startled and I look around, uh, but the sun is out, birds are singing, it's like a dream. I go outside and there's some matted grass, but that's about it. So I haul all my shit together in one fell motion. I hike eight hours down to the closest road down a side trail. I hitch a ride to the nearest town and I get a cheap motel room, lock the door behind me, and I look under the bed. Because <laughs> you don't know, the wolf, you know. <laughs> In my defense, the wolf is a cunning predator. <laughs> but that night, finally, I have a safe, secure place to get some rest. And I close my eyes, and all I see is being like teleported back to that tent. And it's that shadowy head just watching me. And all I hear is an almost imperceptible lingering and terrifying growl. Thank you. Thank you.